Hi y'all, I'm Jody from ARC. Nah, I'm just fooling with ya. This is Eric, I am the Grey Goat. This is the Grey Goat Garage and we're powered by OMB Warehouse. We're starting to build this Predator 224 engine and this is like building any other stroker engine. It takes uh, a bit more work than what we're used to. So um, I, I've already got my everything clearanced in the block. But we're gonna we're gonna take my support plate off, and you can also use the support plate that uh, that I make for OMB Warehouse. And uh, these are for sale, and this will help you look in the engine and get everything clearanced so your engine will do this with the stock parts with the connecting rod and the cam it's not all going to fit in this block the extra stroke means that things are getting tighter on the inside so let's go ahead and take this apart and i'll show you what we have going i'm going to have to direct my cameraman the only ever trusted christian to show what we had to do we're gonna to have to do a close-up um, you'll notice between the lobes of the cam I had to grind some material off the cam and this is to clear the rod and the, this is something that you have to have a piston in the engine with the rod to be able to check it I put the piston in without the rings because I haven't set the gap on the rings yet and I just needed to know where that rod was going to come um, through the cylinder as it's coming around. So, bust out the Dremel. Um, I like to uh, I used a carbide bit to start, and after that, then I hit it with a sanding roll to smooth it out. I want to keep everything as smooth as possible to reduce what we call a stress riser, any casting marks or anything like that 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 can start a crack will lead to breakage so i got this as smooth as i could and now this this is the 275 cam but you're gonna find issues with any cam regardless if it's a mod 2 or a 265 um, these cores are inconsistent here in the center so we're gonna have to do a little work here on the the camshaft okay let's get this rod out of here It's always hard for me to do all this with trying to show you what's going on. Dyno cams, with all their cams, have a warning in here. Cam may require clearancing between the lobes when using a billet rod. This is with every cam that they sell. There is no cam that's pre-clearanced for all engines as that doesn't exist. Uh, it's kind of like the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny. Um, it just doesn't happen that way. Fat fingers. And remember, this takes a 12 point socket on these 12 point ARP rod bolts for the ARC billet rod. Now, what I'm using is the stock length clone rod, the 3.303 inch rod, and I'm using the 570 pin height piston. So that got me right to zero deck. Okay. So for the crank, got out the grinder, and just like the Hemi cranks, took a little material off the, the top of the journal here. Tape your journal up first so you don't nick it with the grinder. I use a flap wheel, um, grind them down smooth. And that this can hit the exhaust lobe. Um, never too many issues with that, but I like to grind them down evenly. So I got that done. What you'll also know is that I had to grind the crank here and here. You can see where, where I use the flap wheel to kind of knock some of the material down. It had kind of a, 
uh, a square edge there here where they knocked it off here and that was hitting the bottom of the piston so you know I clearance this a little bit I also went back on the piston and cleaned up just a little bit of material off the bottom here typically what I'm looking for is three uh, thirty thousandths point zero zero three point zero three zero inches of clearance between all the moving parts in here thirty thousandths point zero three zero uh, point zero zero three is valve last by the way um, that's why it's ingrained in my brain so inside the block here got some residual oil in here that I'll wipe out Now, we're going to have to get Christian the cameraman to get some extreme close-ups. But the first thing I noticed was that the, the dipper for the rod was hitting the front of the case. It just It was slightly hitting, not a big deal, but I had to remove a little bit of material so I get that 30 thousandths clearance. I think I have 40 thousandths clearance here. You have to be careful. You don't want to pop through the front of the case. It is thicker right there, so it should not be an issue. Just don't get too aggressive with it. The next part I had to grind was, you'll notice at the factory, they relieve the top of the, the block for the rod right here. And I had to relieve the bottom of the cylinder right in this area here that was done purely so the rod would clear so as that rod spinning around it was hitting the bottom of the cylinder and the top of the cylinder so I got in my uh, my Dremel with a carbide bit uh, roughed it out first then went back with a sanding roll um, I'm still not happy with the way it looks I'll go back with a sanding roll and clean it up some more so um, this is like building any stroker engine you have to make sure that all your clearances are set. So we, we don't want anything hitting as this thing starts rotating. It will self-clearance, but it'll self-destruct too. So make sure that you, you're using either a cut side cover or one of our um, bolt-on clear pieces here. This is a light duty piece and not for somebody that's going to build a lot of engines if you're building a lot of engines sacrifice the side cover and cut one up if you're just building one engine this is a valuable tool for you to help you get everything in the engine it allows you to spin the engine and make sure that nothing's going to hit and like i said 30 thousandths point zero three zero is the minimum amount of clearance i want between everything in this engine Building a stroker like this is not for everybody. If you're afraid to grind on a block, um, if you don't have the right tools, then maybe seek some professional help to have your engine built. No, I don't build engines here. I struggle to get my own stuff done. Sorry, I had to have a little bit of beverage for my throat. Um, <coughs> so don't be afraid to do it. Just take your time doing it. So far, I've had this engine, <coughs> the bottom end, together and apart probably a dozen times until I was happy with the clearances that I saw. It's just, it's not something that you're going to slap together quickly and easily. <coughs> Excuse me. Dry air here in Burbank, California. So, get in with your Dremel get everything cleaned up when I get the Dremel in the block I'll use some tape and I'll tape off this bearing <clears throat> that way I don't have to worry about getting stuff inside the bearing and keep it running free and keep it clean so after I'm done grinding everything this block will go into the sink um, I gotta wait for Mrs. Goat to be gone and I'll get some Dawn dishwashing detergent I'll get some microfiber towels that are clean and I will scrub it. I will scrub the bore quite a bit. Sometimes there's some grit left over from, from the factory in the bore, so I want that to be absolutely clean. 
the issue that we're going to have here is this is going to start to rust in about 90 seconds so i prepare myself before i even take this inside when mrs goat's not home i'll take um i'll, I'll lay out a towel on the on the bench here i'll have the air compressor full um, and i'll also have my oil can ready so when i bring this out the first thing i'm going to do is oil down this cylinder i'm going to spray some wd-40 in this bearing and then i'll blow everything out get it as dry as I can. Then I'll come back, I'll wipe down the bore, and then I'll reoil oil it. So it will, the, the cast iron bore, it will rust quite quickly. So be prepared for that. Just to have everything ready. As soon as I run out of the house, as Mrs. Goat's pulling up in the driveway, then I'll come oil that cylinder down, WD-40 in the bearing, and then blow everything out. And then I'll clean it back up. I'll wipe down the cylinder re-oil the cylinder then I can start assembling the engine so if you're afraid to use a grinder building an engine I'm not always comfortable with it but if you're gonna build a Predator 224 you better get used to it because this is just like building any stroker engine that extra three millimeters of stroke is putting everything closer to the cylinder closer to the case so we never want to grind on a billet rod that's a no-no we always grind just the cam perhaps the crank and the inside of the case never on a billet rod um, that part takes a lot of stress and we don't want that to fail and uh, just in case you didn't see this the first time around yes that's what we all deal with the cam may require clearancing between the lobes okay so I've had to do this on some smaller engines as well. So once I have all my tolerances and clearances checked, then I'll go back, clean it up, and then I can start doing the final assembly on this. Take your time, go slow. It, it's, it's nothing critical. Um, replacement blocks are about 55 bucks uh, just off the top of my head. So, you know, the worst that can happen is you're gonna mess up a $55 block. But um, if you go slow, take your time, either use a cut side cover or our, our plastic cam installation tool, you're not gonna have any problems. I'm not Jody, I'm Eric. I am the Grey Goat. It's my garage, my rules. And you know, we are powered by ombwarehouse.com. We do have a specific section on the site just for the Predator 224 engines. And if you have any questions, you can always email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, it's hard for me to respond to all the, the people off YouTube, so email me at the warehouse, help at ombwarehouse.com. Thank you for watching.